algebra one lesson eighty seven more on systems of equations and tests for functions so systems of equations is these when they give us this big long line of multiple equations and we have to sort out which equations are which and then solve for different pieces so i copied that one over here and if you remember the last time we did this i said part of the trick is figuring out where the difference between the equations are and we can do that if we look for the commas right so every time i put a comma that is a new equation and it often helps to recopy these out on different lines so the first equation we can see really quick here is r1 times t1 plus r2 times t2 equals 360. the next equation we have is r1 equals 30 then we have that r2 equals 40 so those are already solved uh, and then we have t1 plus t2 equals 10. all right so we have this big first equation and then these three small equations right after it and then we have to find t1 and t2 so first we got to learn how to read this and separate the information looking for the commas <clears throat> and not being overwhelmed by the massive block of letters and numbers and then we have to figure out how we can solve for t1 and t2 now this first equation I said is always going to be the most important equation that's the one you're going to want to substitute into so uh, what we see here is uh, we can substitute r1 and r2 very quickly so I can rewrite this as 30 times t sub 1 plus 40 times t sub 2 equals 360 so that's the first substitution I'm going to do I rewrote this first equation down here like this filling in these and these now lastly, in order to solve for t1 and t2, I have to solve this equation for one of them so I can substitute that. So I'll go ahead and do that in orange. Uh, if I subtract t2 from each side, <clears throat> this equation then becomes t1 equals 10 minus t sub 2. I can take this value and substitute it for t1 in this equation. So this becomes 30 times 10 minus t2. plus 40 times t sub 2 equals 360. So now that I've substituted, if I use distributive property and rewrite this equation, I can then solve it. So we'll go ahead and distribute. Uh, 30 times 10 is 300. Uh, 30 times negative t sub 2 is minus 30 t sub 2. Then we have plus 40 t sub 2 equals 360. I can add like terms here and those combine to become 10 t sub 2 so 300 plus 10 t sub 2 equals 360. i have finished rewriting the equation and then i can start solving <clears throat> so using pemdas backwards i'm going to attack this 300 since it's being added i can subtract 300 from each side that cancels 360 minus 300 becomes 60 and then i have 10 times t sub 2 equals 60. From here i'll divide each side by 10 and then i get that t sub 2 is equal to 6. so i've solved for one of the missing numbers now if t sub 2 is equal to 6 i can then plug that into here so t sub 1 is going to equal 10 minus 6 right instead of writing t sub 2 i write 6. so t sub 1 is equal to 4. and i answered my equation all right so <clears throat> we're dealing with really big equations we have to you know solve one of these for time and then we plug it in and we get our answer uh, so this will really test your strength of equations and your skill in substitution um, but it's not not too difficult we're not using anything that we haven't used before it's just in a, a bigger format so these are all rules we already know now last we're going to talk about tests for functions so the test for function we're going to learn is called the vertical line test. Now remember, I, I told you that functions uh, can make different graphs on a coordinate plane. And a lot of times functions will make curvy lines, right? Um, and then sometimes things that are not functions will make curvy lines as well, a circle being a type of curvy line. Now the vertical line test says that if you were to take a vertical line and if we were to trace a vertical line across the function actually the sheet of paper is a good example get a ruler all right so 
If we take a vertical line and we trace it across the function, we should only ever touch the function at one point. And we can see that here on the left. If I trace this across the function, my vertical line only ever touches the shape of the curvy line at one point. All right. So that means it is a function. So if it only touches the function at one point, the whole way that you trace it across, it's a function. Now this one, if I go and I trace it across this circle, I see right here, my vertical line is touching the circle at two points, at the top and bottom. And then here, it, the whole way, it's touching at two points. That means this is not a function. So that's the vertical line test. If your vertical line will touch the function at only one point across the whole function, then it is a function. Here, we see it touches at the bottom and at the top, and then at the bottom and at the top. So any more than one point means that it is not a function. It is a relation. So let's go ahead and test a few of these. <clears throat> oh, I went too far. Okay, so let's look at these. If I trace this function or this graph with a vertical line, right here I see I'm touching it at one, two, and then three points. So that is absolutely not a function because it touches at more than one point. Now what about this one? If I trace this one, I'm only ever touching the line at one point, so this one is a function. Now let's go to the last one. If I trace this one from left to right, I see right here I'm touching it at two points, two points, two points. So this is not a function. That's vertical line tests. Let's do a couple more just so we can get a feel for it. Uh, this one right here, if we trace this one, we see we're only touching it at one point the whole way. So this is a function. This one, as soon as I start, I'm touching it two points at the top and at the bottom. This is not a function. Last one, if I go to trace it, Right here, you might think like, hey, this line is almost straight. Is that two points? No, it's slightly curved, which means that the line is only ever touching it at one point. So then as I keep tracing, we're still only touching at one point. So this is a function. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's a vertical line test for functions. If you have any questions, let me know on Moodle, and I will see you in class.